Before we start the video guys, you can get your first month of Envato Elements for only $9 via the link below. If you've watched this channel or if you're a video editor, you probably know what Envato Elements is. It's a pretty good deal. Check it out. Every subscription helps the channel. All right, let's get into this video. And how's it going guys? Joshua Lufemi here and we're in for another creative week with my bro Richard Lau. You may remember Richard from this incredible video that he did a while ago called How to Build a Video Editing PC on a Budget. A lot of you guys like that video. We brought Richard back and we're gonna have him cover just a lot of kind of random topics in short snippets of videos. In this video, we're gonna be covering Richard's take on the world of external hard drives. Richard, floor is yours. What up lovely humans, welcome back to another video, it's your boy Richard. And today we're talking about external hard drives. If you're a video editor, you will know how important it is to have an external hard drive. Not only are you able to have your footage and your projects with you on the go, but it's about time that you ditch those traditional hard drives. Hard drives are super old technology and it's slowing down and is definitely not sufficient enough for 2020. And I'll even go as far as to say to ditch the SSDs. Yes, I know, before you guys freak out, here's the reason why I'm saying you should ditch the traditional hard drives as well as the SSDs. There's a new generation of SSDs out there called the NVMe SSD, also known as the M.2 SSD. Now these have been introduced years and years ago and they have been mainly used internally on computers, but they're becoming more popular in the external market. The thing about these NVMe SSDs is that they're way faster than normal SSDs and you're gonna get read and write speeds at the very minimum of one one gig per second. Now the problem with these external NVMe SSDs is that they're way overpriced, which is why you should build your own. It's really not that hard to do and you can actually save a lot of money in the process as well as getting more bang for your buck. And you also have more versatility as you can choose exactly which SSD that you want to use. So what you're going to need is to buy an NVMe SSD, preferably with a high speed, along with an enclosure for it. And when choosing your enclosure, make sure you find something that is Thunderbolt 3 compatible as it can support up to 40 gigabytes per second speed, allowing you to take the most advantage of your drive. The installation is quite simple. All you have to do is open up the enclosure and align the drive at a 45 degree angle to the logic board and screw it down in place to hold it down. Some of them may come with these thermal pads which are great for cooling and helps cool down the drive by transferring the heat onto the heatsink. And just like that, your drive is ready to go. Now there are many types of NVMe SSDs out there with their respected speeds based off of their budgets. So I have broken down into four categories to show the different levels of budgets and performance. Now we are going to be focusing on 1TB SSDs just for reference sake. So the most budget friendly option is the Inland Professional and this one is $95. It has speeds up to 1900 megabytes per second. Next we're going to be looking at the Samsung 970 Evo which is about $35 more and has incredible read speeds of up to 3400 megabytes per second. So nearly double the performance for about $35 extra. Going up an extra tier we're going to be getting the Gen 4 NVMe SSDs which has speeds up to 5000 megabytes per second and you can get this from Sabrent for $170. And if you are a big baller you can spend $230 on the Samsung 9 80 Pro, and this will have a whopping fast 7,000 megabytes per second speed. So as you can see, there are so many options out there in terms of how much you want to spend and how much speed you want to get out of it. And with these options in mind, let's compare it to a pre-built to see how much you're actually saving if you were to build it yourself. So the external reference drive we're going to be looking at is the Samsung T7, and this is the most popular drive on the market right now in terms of NVMe SSD storage. We're going to be looking at the 1TB version, which is $170, and it has speeds up to 1,000 megabytes per second. Now that is even worse than the budget-friendly inland SSD as we looked at earlier, which was about $95. And let's add about $40 for the enclosure that you have to get to custom build it. And if you do the math by getting the inland SSD with the enclosure, you're saving about $35, which is not huge, but $35 is still something you can put extra towards your next piece of gear. And on top of that, you're getting nearly double the performance. And for the same price for this pre-built, you can actually upgrade to the Samsung 970 Evo, which has speeds up to 3,400 megabytes per second with the enclosure. And you're spending about $170, which is even even with the pre-built and you're getting triple to quadruple the amount of performance. Now another benefit of building your own custom portable SSD is that you have the ability to upgrade really easily. The enclosure is universal, you can always take it out and swap a new drive in if you want to upgrade in terms of speed or even size. Now I know this video is focused on using these NVMe SSDs externally, but you do have the option to use it internally if you choose. These drives can actually be fitted onto a computer motherboard if you want to use it as an OS drive or for extra storage, and you can even put it into some of the older MacBooks with an adapter internally. So as you can see, these drives have many use cases, not only externally, but also internally. And so I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to build your own custom NVMe SSD. And it's quite simple to do as well. So hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up as well as drop in your comments below. With that being said, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. This is actually pretty cool. Um, this is not something that I've actually tried yet. Richard was telling me a little bit how he does it. I actually have another bro, Amir. 
and JP over in New York that actually, they do this all the time. They were actually the first people that told me about this, constructing your own SSD hard drives. It's, it's pretty dope. So shout out to all y'all. I'm gonna try this. Hopefully you guys do this too. It seems like a more cost-effective and powerful solution to the necessity of an external hard drive. Thanks so much for watching guys. Thank you, Richard, again. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. And as always, remember to keep it chill.